Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church of Farmington. Welcome, Ben's parents. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, let's see. There is an ice cream social to mark the end of Sunday school uh, this morning during the fellowship time. Bonnie, did they leave us enough ice cream? Oh, there's plenty of ice cream. <laughs> Okay. All right. There were like eight or ten kids this morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're not here now. <laughs> they ate their ice cream and left. But that's okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, mark your calendar. The mission meal uh, in support of Vacation Bible School is coming up rapidly, June 11th. And start saving your peanut butter jars or any small plastic jars for VBS. Where would you like them to put them, Bonnie, when you they know, bring them? Just put them on the table under the window in the fellowship hall uh, on the west window under there. Uh, I'll gather them up and keep it from getting messy. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. There's a sign-up sheet. No, there is not a sign-up sheet going around for our food booth on July 4th. I, we didn't see that sheet, so I know Ryan's traveling like crazy this summer, so we'll try to locate that and send it around soon. Um, let's see. The first food fellowship and evening Bible study is going to be on June 22nd at 6 p.m. June 22nd at 6 p.m. And um, a quick reminder that we have the new audio equipment, so uh, quiet conversations might not be quiet and may appear on Facebook or be heard on Facebook. We still need a nursery attendant, not today, but uh, if you know anyone who's willing to do that in the future, talk to Alyssa or to Chris. Next Sunday is Pentecost, yay. Where are you read if you have any? Um, and today the furniture is supposed to be moved out of the Sunday school classrooms in order to set up for VBS. Is that still the plan? Yes, please, and just as many hands as we could just to get the stuff moved around so that us ladies <laughs> who are doing the decorating and stuff don't have to struggle with that. So. We would love men with muscles or without, actually. <laughs> there you go, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Remember that the newsletter is going to be assembled sometime soon, so the sooner you can get your information to Stephanie, the better. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet for anyone who's willing to gift us with special music this summer. That one is here. 
So uh, there's plenty of open dates on there, so mark away. And I've only received three favorite hymns so far for this summer. Surely you want to sing something, right? Something special? Let me know, text me, or write it on a scrap of paper, um, put it in the offering plate, and we'll make sure to include it this summer. We are going to be planning uh, music sometime, hopefully, the week of June 4th. I hope that works for the music staff. Um, so you got like two more weeks. Uh, if you have any other pictures of beloved graduates, let us know so that we can get them on our slideshow. Send them to Brady or to Stephanie. Are there other announcements you'd like to share this morning? Hearing none, I invite you to stand if you are able, and we will join in our call to worship. Praise the Lord, for God is great indeed. Let us sing praises for God's glorious works. We give glory, honor, and thanksgiving to the Lord, who makes and sustains all things. Our opening hymn is number 234. Come, you faithful, raise the strain. confess our sins against God and our neighbor, trusting in the mercy of our Lord. Let us pray together. Merciful and gentle God, we have wanted reward without sacrifice. We have been unwilling to serve and have not humbled ourselves in obedience. Forgive our hubris, gracious God. For, correct our ignorant ways and help us to know your glory through servanthood. 
Guide us to be true followers of your way, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. People of God, our sins are forgiven. For the Lord who made all things knows our weaknesses. Therefore, turn away from sin and obey the ways of the Lord. Be reconciled to the community in service and love. Sunday morning and we don't have children for the children's sermon. I think we there was a special service that we didn't have children for that I was expecting. <laughs> well, we were going to talk about it being the last Sunday of Sunday school and stuff like that. <laughs> I think once you're in college, we don't count you as a child anymore. I think we count you as a young adult. Okay. All right. Can we get yes. You, <laughs> you know what we should do is pass candy around, and everybody can be a child today. They're right up there if anybody wants to start. So this means you're going to get out early today, right? More time for ice cream. I also don't have to worry about a question that I had about my sermon title because there are no children, and we'll go from there. Our scripture reading for this morning, and there is only one, is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Listen for God's word. Every high priest is taken from the people and put in charge of things that relate to God for their sake in order to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. The high priest is able to deal gently with the ignorant and with those who are misled, since he himself is prone to weakness. Because of his weakness, he must offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the people. No one takes this honor for themselves, but takes it only when they are called by God, just like Aaron. In the same way, Christ also didn't promote himself to become high priest. Instead, it was the one who said to him, You are my son. Today, I have become your father. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. During his days on earth, Christ offered prayers and requests with loud cries and tears as his sacrifices to the one who was able to save him from death. He was heard because of his godly devotion. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. After he had been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for everyone who obeys him. He was appointed by God to be a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So there is our sermon title. I hope you're not offended by it. This sermon is in honor of Christian education, and I believe that we are never done learning as Christians. And I think the best way for us to show children about that, our commitment to that, is for them to see adults learning about the Bible 
and their Christian faith, especially on Sunday mornings. And today, we're going to do it, and they're not here. <laughs> oh, well, best laid plans, right? So, I don't know. We'll see. I'm debating about letting you, asking you if you have questions as we go. So if you do, I'll do my best. Melchizedek. Let's start with this. How many of you have heard of Melchizedek before? One, two, three. All right. How many of you know the story of Melchizedek and are ready to share that? It's a it's an interesting one. Melchizedek is quite a name. And when Carrie and I, my husband Carrie and I, decided to have children, he would tease me with all kinds of names from the Bible. Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and Abednego were some of the names he insisted we must use. And he used to love to torture me with that. And I'll bet... These names make you nervous, too, especially if you're ever expected to read them out loud. Some people don't even like reading them silently. Let's be real. There's nothing quite like a whole list of long, difficult, unpronounceable names that are unfamiliar to us to bring Bible reading to a quick end for some folks. When you combine long names with the fact that most of us don't have a clue who any of these guys are, you can begin to understand one of the many reasons why biblical illiteracy is rampant in our churches today. So this morning, we set out to conquer one name, one story, Melchizedek. Who the heck is Melchizedek? Well, in order to understand who he is, you could look in a couple different places. You could read chapter 7 of Hebrews to find out more. Or you could read the 110th Psalm. Or you could go all the way back to the beginning and read the 14th chapter of Genesis. But I'd have to warn you that the names that appear in the first 10 verses of Genesis chapter 14 make Melchizedek look easy. Here's the story in a nutshell. There were nine kings who each had their own territory. There was one king that was kind of the head honcho over the other kings for 12 years. During the 13th year, five of the big city kings rebelled and did their own thing. Eventually, a war broke out. Four kings against five kings. Unfortunately, Lot, you've heard of Lot, yes? Yes? His wife turned into a pillar of salt. There's uh, a pretty violent story that happens involving Lot. Unfortunately, Lot, who happened to be innocently living in the area at the time, was taken captive. Word of what happened to Lot got to Lot's uncle, Abram, you know Abram, who becomes Abraham, okay, so he, Abram, and 318 men went on to take on the armies of the four kings in order to free Lot, so a little small group of guys against lots and lots and lots of soldiers, warriors, Miraculously, Abram and his tiny band of men win the war. When the fighting was over, one of the kings, Melchizedek, brought out bread and wine and said, Blessed be Abram by God most high, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Melchizedek certainly was the master of understatement. And in return for bread and wine and a blessing, Abram gives him one-tenth of the spoils from the war, one-tenth of the riches from four kingdoms 
Can you imagine? So a few questions arise from the story of Melchizedek. First, what's the big deal about Melchizedek? Any priest of God would have done the same thing. But there hadn't been any priests before Melchizedek. This is way in the early days. He was the first one. Melchizedek was the first person who acted as an agent between God and God's people. Up until this point, the relationship between God and people had been one-on-one -on -one and kind of hit and miss. If Melchizedek hadn't been there, Abram probably would have built an altar and presented his own offering of thanks up to God all by himself. But in this case, Melchizedek intervenes and offers thanks to God on Abram's behalf and also extends a blessing on Abram from God. No one had ever done that before. Even more mysteriously, Melchizedek wasn't an Israelite. He had been a Canaanite priest, a priest that worshipped many gods. But suddenly this priest knows exactly who the Most High God is and what God has done for Abram. Melchizedek is the very first priest of the gods of the Israelites. The second question that arises is why did Abram give him one-tenth of everything? Why did he give a tithe? Because of his gratitude for everything God has done for him, for being with him in the war, for being victorious with such a small band of men, for bringing Lot safely back into the fold, for sending him a priest with a gift of bread and wine, not to mention a great wife and a marvelous life. Abram is so grateful that he gives a tenth of everything to God, God's agent, in thanks. He didn't do it because he felt guilty. He didn't do it because there was a church budget to meet. He didn't do it just to be sure he got in good with God. He didn't do it because suddenly he was rich and now he could afford to do it. He did it because he loved the Most High God and he was super grateful. And of course, he wanted to show his thanks. Sounds kind of like a role model for stewardship. Now, there are some other things that are special and mysterious about Melchizedek. And if you dive into Psalms and further into Hebrews, you'll learn more. But if the story of Melchizedek hadn't had never been handed down through the generations, Christians through the years would never have fully appreciated the mediator role of Jesus Christ. You see, Melchizedek didn't have the bloodlines to be an Israelite priest, and neither did Jesus. Melchizedek offered a blessing on Abram's behalf and not just his own, just as Jesus did the same for us. Just as Abram was overcome with gratitude when he met God's agent in Melchizedek, we need to understand what it is, how awesome it is that Jesus acts as our high priest and what it took for him to be in that role. As our text said, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but he was appointed by God, the God who spoke to his beloved son at the time of his baptism, and the God who sent Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up the ultimate prayers. In Jewish tradition, there are three levels of prayers. The first and the lowest is of supplication. The second is loud cries, and the third is tears. When Jesus offered up all three in the Garden of Gethsemane to be saved from death, in the end, he chose to be obedient to God. And because he was obedient even to death on a cross, he completed our salvation 
He was the one sacrifice that not only covered our sins, but removed them. Jesus was the sacrifice, one for all, once for all. And now, he is the high priest, eternally interceding, praying on our behalf, making us in right relationship with God, always praying for us, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, forever and ever, amen, making us in a right relationship with God, interceding on our behalf. That's pretty awesome. So make sure you get in there and offer your thanks for the high priest, God's son. Use him as your mediator. Turn to him as your mediator. Offer up your prayers and remember to close them with the proper address. As Christians, we say, in Jesus' name. He's right there, working for us all the time, every day, every moment. Today is the last day day of Sunday school for a while, and this is a great time to ask the participants what they learned this year, so next time you see them, ask them. <laughs> you need to, we need to listen to their stories. We need them to tell their stories of faith, and we need to tell them our stories of faith. We need to pass on each other's stories. We need to tell others how the Most High God has blessed us. We need to tell how we have experienced Christ answering our prayers. And just maybe we'll fully appreciate the role God plays in our lives, just as the story of Melchizedek shed light on the life and role of Jesus Christ. So take the time today, tomorrow, each day, to listen to the stories of your brothers and sisters in faith and give your gift of gratitude back to God, not only for you, but for them. Amen. We are going to join in singing hymn number 340, This Is My Song, and I invite you to stand if you are able.
seated. Do we have any birthday people in the house today? All right. We come to the time for a sharing of joys and concerns. What would you like to share today? Tim's going to help on that side, and I'll help over here. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> My granddaughter, Adriana, uh, graduated from high school. She also received her CNA while she was going to school. She's going on to ICC to get her to be an RN. Ooh, what a joy. That's great. Who else? Pat? No? All right. My mother has taken her first trip since my father died. She went on vacation. She is somewhere on the Mississippi River right now. But she's with my sister, so it's okay. So they have to get back home yet, and but everything seems to be going okay, but it was a big step for her. Was it a river cruise? Yeah, it's, it's a culinary river cruise. Ooh. We want details when, when she tells them to you. Okay, who else? Okay, so um, this year, I forgot about all this, so thank you for reminding me. Um, it's been really busy so far. Um, the end of the school year kind of came up on me. My Scholastic Bowl team did win regionals, and then we went on to sectionals and won one out of three games. So that was really, really cool to hear, and the kids were excited, and, and they're pumped for next year already. Um, also, I, I got picked as a national presenter at the middle school national conference next year. It's November 1st through the 4th in um, National Harbor, Maryland, and I will be presenting about robots in the classroom. Yeah. So that's really good that I will be presenting nationwide to Yay. other educators. Yes. How's your mom? So my mom, yes, thank you. Um, so update on my mom. My mom is home. She is healing. Um, she had an infection in the brain and her nerves. So we finally got her on the right prescription and medications, and she's walking now and um, on the road to recovery. So yes. 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 Thank you. Who else would like to share this morning? So I just want to share that God truly is good. Um, this morning I was a little disappointed because I knew that some kids weren't going to be making it to Sunday school and kind of losing some of my enthusiasm this morning. And uh, all of a sudden, three kids that aren't always here were here this morning. And so, you know, I needed it. God knew I needed it. And praise the Lord. Yay. Yeah, the, now is a great time. If you're a Sunday school teacher, can you please stand up so we can show you some love? We really appreciate it. And, and Beth, too, you're included in that. You were a teacher for part of the year, so thank you very much. Who else? Liz has something. My friend from work, we've been praying for her father. Um, he had the Whipple done. Everything was, has done wonderful. Um, he had his last treatment. But last week, her mother fell, and she broke, fractured her pelvis. So she's battling probably dementia or Alzheimer's and doesn't understand why she has to be down. So they're looking at some nursing home placement um, for therapy. And so they just, their whole family needs some prayers. OK. Does anybody have an update on Nancy? Anybody? Okay. Tony? 
We want everyone to continue prayers for Diana's mother, Eileen Dillard, who is struggling down at, uh, down at what, what's the name of it? The, the, loft. the loft, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, she's there for rehab. Anyone else? You just want to get out super early. You're going to have to brag to all the people who weren't here about how early we got out. We would have gotten out this early if they were here. See, that's what you have to tell them. Anybody else? Okay. Now it is. Okay. I'm going to pray from here. Unless anybody else wants to lead a prayer today, I'd be thrilled to have someone come up and lead the prayer. Y'all are chuckling. Every last one of you are chuckling. All right. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know something about how we human beings are tainted, and you know that pastors often will offer really long prayers when they have lots of extra time. Please help me in that temptation. Help me to understand that it's not how much time worship takes, but it's our taking this time, however long it is, to worship you, to give you thanks and praise, to examine our relationship with you, to have fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and share our stories of how you have been active in our life this week, this day, this year, this decade. We are grateful for this opportunity to come together, to sing, to share our joys and our concerns, to marvel at this gift of life. You know that our prayer list is very long. You know that there are people who aren't even on our list that we are concerned about and are praying for. And we trust, O oh God, that you will be with them. You will strengthen them. You will guide them. You will comfort them. And you will also call us to do the same. We thank you for those opportunities of service. We thank you for those opportunities where people can see what a difference our faith makes, not only in our lives, but in this community and throughout this world. We thank you, God, for gifting us. We thank you, God, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who prays and reigns in power for us, who is there to guide us. We are grateful for the many ways that he taught us. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, we lift up the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Cindy, yep. I did forget to mention that Ed Wilson that from Ace Harper that we had been yep. praying for, he did pass away. Did he pass away? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Prayers for his family. And for the people at the hardware store because I, I, I think just about every time I've been in there, Somebody was asking for an update on how he was doing and, and whatnot. So, okay, so prayers for the family and friends and co workers of Ed Wilson. 
God is ever faithful and has blessed us with so much. With grateful hearts, let us offer back to God what we have with love and thanksgiving. is mine. Jesus is mine, sorry. Uh, number 839. <laughs>
The Son of Man came to serve, not to be served. Let us follow Christ's example and give our all to God and to one another. May the knowledge and love of the one who knit the earth together rest with you and give you strength to help others for the glory of God. Amen.